Well, he's got a pretty darn good pedigree with the Nexus 6P having hit the U.S. shores and doing very, very well for itself. So let's see if they can keep up with their own benchmarks that they set with the Huawei Mate 8. There's four major things that I really want to cover with the Mate 8. Performance, screen, battery, and software. So I want to start with all the rest of the things, just kind of get them out of the way. So the camera on the back and on the front really is just okay. It's not amazing. You're not going to be upset with the photos that you're taking. Overall, things look fine. Uh, it's definitely a little over sharpened and over processed for my taste, but that's something that you're going to see a lot with Chinese manufacturers. That said though, the camera is perfectly fine. It's not the industry leader, but you're not going to be upset with the performance. The build is fan freaking tastic. We know what Huawei's builds tend to look and feel like, and since this is very similar in size and, and, and quality in terms of price point as the 6P is, we kind of expected a lot of this, but I didn't expect the chamfered edges. I didn't expect it to feel so nice in the hand. I didn't expect it to feel like a really quality slab of hardware. And I gotta tell you, it really, really does. They knocked it out of the park with the build quality on this thing. The Kirin 950 is an octa-core processor in a big little formation, and that means there's four processors clocked at 2.3 gigahertz and four smaller processors clocked at 1.4 gigahertz. I was not able to get this thing to stutter for me even once. Launchers, games, movies, downloads, updates in the background, I just can't get it to think twice about a single thing. And what I think is really telling about this thing is that in the benchmarks, it beats Samsung's top of the line Exynos right now. It, this phone literally sits on top of the N22 benchmark scores. And I gotta say, I'm not a benchmark guy, but it really shows on the Mate 8. Part of the reason that I think the performance is so fantastic is because that screen on the front, that's the other big thing that I really wanna talk about. The screen on the Mate 8 is a 1080 screen, okay? The PPI is still very high. You're still not gonna see pixels, but this is not the highest resolution screen that you're gonna see on the market. And you know what? That's actually kind of okay here. The other place that that lower resolution screen comes into play is that battery life. And that battery life is exactly what I meant to say. You can get two days of use out of this thing, no problem. You, you, can, you can get this thing to last all week if you really want it to. This should be the gold standard. And moving forward in terms of battery life, very impressed. EMUI, I don't use this phrase lightly, it's an abomination. It, it removes the aft drawer, it changes everything. It's just, it's all fogged glass and it's one thing if you wanna knock something off and do a good job knocking it off, which they sort of do, but it's another to shoehorn another experience onto a platform that's just not built for it. What we're running on this is still a beta build. We're still getting updates on a regular basis. We did reach out to Huawei and say, hey, we have a couple of questions. Is this a bug or is this the feature? A few things we found were features, but they are still problems. And this is one of those parts where the software really, really shows its rough edges. You're constantly nagged by the software, whether or not you really want to do something. You want to really dismiss that notification because it might make your experience a little worse. There's other weird things like the ability for third-party launchers to set themselves as the default launcher doesn't work. You have to dive all the way into the settings, which is, I'm not joking, about five layers deep to change your actual default home screen. I actually had to reach out to David Ruddock from Android Police to figure out where the hell that setting even was. This is the number one thing that I'll tell you about this phone that really, really sucks. And it, for me, it really is a big sticking point. And it almost made me tell you not to buy it, but I'm not gonna do that. The software isn't a deal breaker in the Mate 8 because it gives you so much more than that. And if you can get used to the software quirks, then you've got an incredibly, incredibly competent, capable device in your hand. Give me something in the range of $500 to $600 that makes one or two very small compromises that I can still get the performance and the battery life and the experience that I wanna get out of a fantastic device without having to make even more compromises at the $400 price point. In the two weeks I've been using the Mate 8, it, I've had a really, really positive experience despite the software. And really, that's the story at the end of the day. The Mate 8 is some great hardware with some pretty bungled software. At the end of the day, 
the Mate 8 is a pretty solid buy. Just with the caveat, a little disclaimer, make sure that you can deal with the software. Wherever you buy it from, make sure they have a decent return policy, or if you can, get your hands on one at first. I gotta say, guys, I was really impressed by the Mate 8. I, I found myself bouncing back and forth between the 6P and the Mate 8, and I'm, I'm surprisingly impressed. If they can really kind of get their act together in terms of software, I'm very excited to see what, what else we can expect to see from them throughout the rest of the year. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Mate 8. There's a like button for you to click on if you enjoyed this video. There's a subscribe button to click on if you want to get more videos like it. And of course, you can also tweet me, at Mark B, if you want to have a quick conversation, whether it's 2 a.m., 2 p.m., doesn't really matter. Just let me know what you think. I love talking with you guys. You make my life a lot better. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be kind to one another, and I'll catch you in the next video, I think. I hope. I hope I'm in the next video. If I'm not in the next video, this is going to be an awkward conversation to have later.